All right, so keeping with the theme here, I want to start. I want to go over the Cori cycle. Now, the Cori cycle again is a, is another, you know, pathway that you're going to talk about in class. And and essentially, if we look at the, the diagram here, all that's happening is we're taking we're we're taking glucose, converting it to lactate, and we're using the blood as a transport system, and it's transporting these two lactates, which remember I said were a dead end. So this is in glycolysis when lactate's produced, this is a dead end. There's no use for this. There's nothing this can do. Okay, there's nothing this can do for us in the muscles. So it accumulates in the muscles. Now to take some of that out of the muscles, we can transport it via the blood, okay? So to the liver, okay? And in the liver, that has a way of essentially taking lactate and making two pyruvates from it with it. And remember, through the process of gluconeogenesis, which I just discussed, the two pyruvates can be converted into glucose, okay? Now, let's look at the pathway just a little bit more. Um, and again, I should mention this before I move on, that it's transported again by the blood. So the blood is basically like the transport system that transports the glucose that's made in the liver back to the muscles to be used again, to be, um, to be broken down again, okay, or oxidized in, um, in the muscle, okay, for energy. So that's exactly what's going on here. Now... So we start with glucose, and we know from, this is basically glucose to 2 pyruvates, that's just glycolysis, okay? And we know that the products of glycolysis are 2 ATPs and 2 NADHs, okay? And it requires 2 NAD+, okay? So it requires these 2 NAD+, to make these 2 pyruvates. So then to convert to lactate, essentially what happens is we regain those 2 NADP+, NAD pluses, which are used again, which are reduced again in um, gluc glycolysis, rather. And um, this is a way of replenishing NAD plus, okay? Going from pyruvate to lactate, this fermentation process. Okay, so it takes two NADHs, makes two NAD plus, gives us two lactates. Okay, but again, this is a dead end, so what do you do with it? Well, you transport it in the blood to the liver, okay, or through the blood to the liver. And by transporting it to the liver, the liver can go through a process where it takes the two lactates, okay, notice again, we, it requires two NADP, or NAD plus rather, and makes two NADH, so this is reduced, and then lactate is oxidized to make two pyruvates, okay? So this is getting reduced, okay? It's gaining electrons, and this is getting oxidized, losing electrons. It's going to make the two pyruvates. And then, remember I said it costs six ATPs. That's exactly how much it costs here, because this process right here is just gluconeogenesis. So it costs six ATPs, and two NADHs are again, re, are again oxidizing here, the NADH back to NAD+, and it's making glucose. And then that glucose can be transported by the blood, to the muscle. All right, so really a pretty simple process. Essentially what's going on here is glycolysis, fermentation, transport. Re this is being just oxidized, okay? All right. And then gluconeogenesis. So really, not a, not a terribly, all pathways we've already seen. I've already discussed glycolysis. I've already discussed um, fermentation, both to lactate and ethanol. And I've already discussed gluconeogenesis. So what I did here was I just talked about it a little bit. And I said, when oxygen is available, sufficient energy to power muscular activity comes from feeding pyruvate into the citric acid cycle. Okay, but however, if oxygen supply is low, then energy must be produced by anaerobic respiration. Remember, there's anaerobic glycolysis. That's how we get lactate. All right, and the process converts pyruvate to lactate, and most importantly, it regenerates NAD+. Okay, remember I said that's most important because if we don't have NAD+, then we can't continue going through glycolysis. Okay, and that could that could be totally detrimental to the cell. All right, and which allows additional rounds of glycolysis to occur. So the lactate produced in the muscle is taken up by the liver, okay, and this initiates the other half of the cycle that occurs in the liver, 
And that's exactly what I said. You know, the gluconeogenesis portion of it is taking place in the liver. Okay, this part's taking place in the liver. The conversion of lactate to pyruvate, that's also taking place in the liver. So this initiates the part in the, the second half of the reaction in the liver, and lactate's converted to pyruvate, and then glucose, by, and then to glucose by gluconeogenesis. And just to, for clarity, the blood serves as a transport as a transport vessel. Um, it's the way in which the glucose is transported back to the muscle once it's made in the liver, and the way lactate is transferred to the liver, tra or transported to the liver. Okay, it's through the blood. So. That about sums up the Cori cycle. I think this is a really nice little diagram that shows all the different molecules that are being oxidized, what's being reduced, and exa exactly what's going on here with some color coding. So hopefully this.